Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. And, Coach, after the game on Saturday night, Bison's 14-13 winners, you called it uh, sometimes an ugly victory. Boy, the defense played great. Uh, again, they've only given up two touchdowns in the first four weeks. But, boy, sometimes you've got to have some of those ugly victories in a season. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. You know, there are a lot of parts of it was ugly. But, you know, we everybody talks a lot about, you know, football is such a great life teacher. Well, if, if that's true, then that was really on display Saturday night because it was hard. I mean, the, the entire way was hard. We couldn't get a break. The ball didn't bounce our way. And, you know, we really had to practice, you know, what do you do when it's not going your way? And I thought the guys did a tremendous job of sticking together, of encouraging one another, of, of, of sharing strength with one another. And, um, you know, I just – I don't love the things that made it hard, but I love how we handled the hard. And I was, I was really, really proud of the, the attitude, the focus, the, just the physical nature of the game. But, you know, we got we to gotta clean some things up, but I was proud of the kids. Family weekend at Harding is always uh, an incredible weekend. And uh, just all over campus, there were fans early. And I came early for soccer and already saw the people tailgating fans. And we had softball on campus as well. Brotherhood Walk, I know all the folks out there for that, and that's that's got to feel good for your football team to see the stands packed when you get in well, there as well. Well, we love, love, love what's happening with the Brotherhood Walk, and the, the, the tailgating is just fantastic. I mean, it had a it had a homecoming type atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the crowd was that awesome, and the you know the barbecue was rolling, and the music was playing, and it was just was a really, really uh, awesome environment for our guys, and, and that's a giant deal. I hope we can keep it up because it was a lot of fun right now. If you're, if you're listening to this and you haven't been to the tailgate party, you need to show up because it's really good right now. It's something that has grown so much. I, I remember years ago I could park where I wanted to when I got to the stadium about three hours before the game. Coach, I've had to find a new parking spot. I love it. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're going to try to keep on moving you farther and farther away. That's a, that's a great problem to have. And, just really do appreciate everybody that came out and, and supported the guys. It's awesome. Yeah, and enjoyed what was an absolutely beautiful day for football. And that atmosphere, obviously, to, to hear the crowd and for the, the, the players to be on the field and see a big crowd, I know that means a lot to be out there, Coach. The dogs are even having a great day on, on Saturday. But when they go through that brotherhood walk, and before they even go in and put the pads on, they know what's awaiting them. That has that has to give them a charge, right? Oh, there. there's no doubt. That 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 boost of energy is a big deal. And you know, I I thought our guys played with a lot of energy, played as if they had a big crowd behind, which we did. And and you know, I just love it. I love it for our boys. You know, they they work really hard, and it's it's awesome to see them be rewarded with people coming out and pulling for them. So. I want everyone to know how much it means to us, how much we appreciate it, and we hope we can continue that. Well, we have a lot of good highlights to look at from the 14-13 victory on Saturday night. Coach said at one point that he challenged the playmakers to make plays, and boy, did they ever in the football game as the Bisons ran their record to 3-1 and one on Saturday night. We'll come back and start with first-half highlights right after this. When you think of Miami, you think of know, rich, glamour, but five miles away from the beach, there's people who've never seen the beach. I was confused why somebody was in this situation, especially in America. So when I started Joshua's Heart Foundation, it was a key thing to be able to engage youth in the foundation, to help them participate. I think passing on the torch and lighting a new flame in another person to do good is probably the point of the bigger missions that I have. So we are each making a bigger difference. That's it, just giving back and producing love for everybody. Welcome back to this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. The Bisons ranked 22nd nationally after their three and one, uh, after their three and one start, and after the victory on Saturday night. And Paul Simmons, we'll see the defense uh, very early in this first quarter. We talked about them when we first came on early as well. But boy, they made an impact right off the bat. They really did. There were a lot of big plays in the game. This pick by Taylor Trier was it was a huge play. You know, given setting the offense up down the 20 yard line, leading to. You know, a, a touchdown was a giant deal. Really, really proud of our old senior, Taylor Streeter. 
you know, he's really kind of waited his turn for four years, mm -hmm. and it's his turn now. He's making plays, and really, really proud of him. Of course, you see old Cole chance to get going. You know, he had a he had a, such a warrior night. Now, I mean, what do you have? Thirty eight touches, thirty six touches. Yeah, and 166 yards uh, in the football game, 38 uh, carries, one touchdown. And he was uh, just about, I think, 14 yards short of uh, Allen Snake Dixon's uh, mark of most rushing yards against Henderson State. Well, I'll tell you the thing about him. He, he never has a, a carry ever that ends with him going out of bounds or falling, finding a soft spot to lay. Every time he carries the ball, it ends in a car wreck, car wreck you know. And, and he's just such a, you know, I told the guys, Last night I said, I don't know if we've ever had a player in our history this tough. And I shouldn't say that about a guy until he's gone, but I, I feel that way. Good punt here. Put some Bisons deep in your own territory now at the 20-yard line. You know, our offense did a lot of good things. I know there's a lot of frustration, you know, when you only score 14 points and you, and you, you, know, you only punt twice, then some things didn't go well. But... Boy, a lot of guys played really well. There was a great, great kick right there by Cameron, who's continuing to have an all-conference level season for us. The, the kicking game altogether was, was great on the night. That was, that was part of the winning edge, without a doubt. Yeah, that was 54 yards, and once again, no return. Yeah. And, uh, the return yardage, I know, has been a big deal for no return yards. Here's one of the plays that makes Coach Moat furious. We, just, we, had a few, we had a few more fit issues than we, than we normally have. And... Uh, Frustrating, but boy, you know, you, you talk about guys getting the ball first and goal from the three yard line and not getting in the end zone. That's awesome. You know, three rushes from three yards away, really impressive. Yeah, Cedric Robinson had a big stop there on what was third down and goal that forced the field goal. As we move into the second quarter, Bison still with a uh, seven to three lead right now. Look at that safety getting knocked out. And that's, and that's fantastic football now, just so tough. Preston making a good decision. I, I did like the way all of our guys got behind our pads. You know, we we want to we want to run, finish off runs, get behind our pads. Tough situation. We just you know got to get rid of the ball sooner and got to protect longer. Almost. You know, well, that you yeah. know that to me is the way the whole night felt like. Yeah. You know, so many situations were were almost, and if he catches that ball or you know later a ball hits Corey Beatty in the hands, and I think he was seeing 99 yards yeah. and. You know, whereas versus SAU, those things bounce our way. They did not bounce our way Saturday night, and that's why it was a good win. We had a lot of adversity. But the secondary uh, with, with good play on, on Saturday night. Oh, yes, yeah. Stamati coming in, that guy, you know, he can really, really throw it, and what did we give up, 130 yards passing? And, you know, to have played four ball games and, 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 and have not given up a passing touchdown the season, that's ridiculous. Bison's right now. Down 10-7 with the football is Tristan Tucker with another strong night as well. 10 carries, 50 yards. And those we talk all the time about the slot backs and all they do that we don't see on the scorebook. Well, and we actually we only played three guys. Mm -hmm. you know, we had a couple of guys that were a little bit banged up that should be back this week. And so we played three guys the entire night. We, we had a freshman dressed and ready to play and – but we didn't, didn't want to play him. And for those guys to play the whole way on that human night is really impressive. So, Cohue, Baylor Cohue with a good run right Baylor before Baylor Cohue with a great run. That, we had two plays that we kind of said were our, were our offensive plays of the night, and, and, and Baylor's run was one of them, and then the last play of the game was the other huge one. But then again, to get inside the red zone and, and give the ball away is just, you, you can't do that and beat a good team. And this was a big play in the football game. Uh, we'd come back uh, with a hold and uh, Henderson State's only penalty. Yeah, that was a big one. It was very timely. Well, I thought Jacory had a dynamite night. You know, he, he just attacked the return game so well. It was our first time seeing him return punts for us this year and did a great job. Did a great job, you know, also returning, uh, uh, returning kickoffs. That's the fourth down stop and the fourth uh, goal line stand for Henderson State on a, a very close play that uh, when, when you went back and looked at it, the, the football was just barely outside of the goal line and Henderson State was able to run the clock out there to close out the first half of play. And 10-7 and at the half, how frustrating was it going into the locker room because you talked about being in the red zone. We saw it there twice and uh, came away with nothing and knowing that, that you're playing well but didn't get anything yeah, out it, of the you know, it, it felt like a game that we should be leading 21 to nothing or 28-7, to uh, but we weren't. 
Yeah. And, um, you know, that a lot of times when you're in a situation where, you know, you just can't punch it in and you can't come through, it's just, it, it's really easy for the anxiety to build and for guys to tighten up. And, but, you know, the message at halftime was really clear, you know, be who we are, love on one another, keep on working, we're going to make plays. And, and, and again, you know, we need the guys that are the big time playmakers to make some plays. And, and what we did, we had some guys make big time plays for us in the second half. And, you know, we're really, really proud of that. We'll get a chance to look at those second half highlights. Bice is down 10-7 at halftime at this part in the show. We'll come back and look at third quarter and fourth quarter highlights right after this. They took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Dad! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Welcome back to Harding Football with Paul Simmons as we look at the highlights from Saturday night's 14-13 victory over Henderson State. Henderson State came in 3-0 and on the season, and the Bisons 2-1, and and Henderson State with a lead at the half, but the Bisons with the football to begin this third quarter, and Coach, I thought this drive was a huge drive, and obviously it starts with a great kickoff return. Yeah, you know, when you get first down on the 40-yard line, that's a big deal, and the, the kickoff return team did a great job. This was, this was one of the, yeah. the three or four fantastic plays of the night. You know, we, we needed a spark so bad faked the punt, and, and, and they did a great job defending it. It, it really wasn't there, but Shedrick just, he made a play that was all about will. It was about his will, and, and you know, I, I love that so much about him, the way he battled, and we, we, you know, we needed a spark, and he sure gave it to us. Yeah, he broke two tackles on, on that play right off the bat, and then just took it right down the center of the field, and 17 yards for a first down, and puts you in position right here to take the lead. And we're going to see a a strong run from Cole Chancy here at yeah, the goal line. Yeah, that's, you know, that's when you got the ball on the one yard line, you, you need to end up three yards deep in the end zone. That way there's no question about it. So I love the, I love the will and the resolve that, that, you know, we saw on that drive right there. Coach went for it on fourth down seven times, five of seven on fourth down on Saturday night. And that was a big one there. Yeah, you know, I just, we just have a lot of belief. I mean, mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we, we believe that. You know, it's really hard to keep the Bisons from getting three yards. You know, we're going we're gonna to keep on playing that way, being aggressive and believing in, our, believing in our kids and also believing in our defense. And not only to score on that first drive, but then to force the punt and get the football right back. And the Bisons would have the football the un, almost the entire third quarter, only four plays by Henderson State on offense. And, and that, is, that is such a spirit-crushing deal. When you're, when you're the Henderson offense and you're standing there watching our offense play all night long, it's hard. It's just difficult, and that's how we want it. You know, we want to, we want to look at their sideline and see guys arguing and seeing guys going back and forth with frustration about, you know, how, how they're not getting to play. You know, that leads to good things for us. Going into the fourth quarter, 14-10 Bisons and the Reddies, trying to put a drive together right here and a first down. And I know this was a scary part in the game, right? Oh, the whole game was scary, yeah. really. And you know, they're 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 a dangerous offense and they're a dangerous team. They're going to have a really good season. I, you know, Coach Maxwell's got a good group and they're talented, and and, and those guys are going to win a lot of football games. Once again, force the punt. Forty-one yard punt. The Bisons get the football back, and what Coach Hansey gets seven on first down. Yeah, uh, you know. Such a such a big deal. Second and three. We got a lot of plays we like on second and three. Second nine, not so much. Fourteen yards right there on that carry. How many times did he get hit? Just carried well, it forward and uh, backs the seven up with fourteen. Yeah, I, I, I can't say enough about it. He's such a such a dude. You know, it was really was a human night. I, there's no excuse. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to value the football. But I tell you what, that that ball was slick and it was a it was a hot night and 
we're in a bad spot right here. We got we got you know first down on the twelve yard line and <clears throat> bad spot and, and you know if you could rewind that I'm sure you can't but you know Beyonce he that was not his man. He was covering yeah. the number one receiver came off and just made a you know the first of his two yeah. unreal plays on the night. So that and, forced the field goal that was. Uh, deep in the red zone and was a huge play. That was on third down. Yeah, and I'm kind of surprised. I thought Max would go for it and try to take a lead right there. And, and uh, you know, I think that's a big statement to how our defense was playing. He didn't have confidence in getting those three or four yards. Would have loved to have caught that ball in a one-yard line. Uh, v had his back turned a little bit. A little over five minutes to go, and here's a huge play. Yeah, this is one of the most unreal plays. I think that, that play right there speaks so much to – who that young man, man is in our culture. And just when the ball was thrown, I thought there's no way he can catch that football. Look at that sideline. But just the effort, the desire. Uh, that was the loudest I've heard a bison crowd in a long time. It's yeah. just, that is exactly what I mean when I say playmakers got to make plays. You know, he's awesome. awesome. I, I thought, you know, we talk about the crowd a lot, but I, for the fans watching, I, you know, I, I love to hear the crowd. And, Coach, I remember a game on a cold day. Everybody was off campus. The Central Missouri game here in the playoffs back in 16 when the Bisons won their first playoff game. It wasn't a big crowd, but it was an energetic crowd. This was a big crowd on Saturday night, and they were energetic. Yeah, well, they, you know, there was a lot of reason to stay interested in the ball game, unfortunately. But, they, yeah, it was a great crowd. And, and, and a lot of our parents that, you know, get to be here once or twice a year were, were here. And so just so proud to, to be able to, to, to get a win. You know, it wasn't perfect, but to get a win in front of all those parents. Uh, makes it for a tough day when, when all your parents are here for that one time and you, you don't get a chance to win that day. So that's a close call. Yeah. We were treated to Bison football on Saturday night, 40 minutes of possession time in the football game on Saturday night for Harding. We'll come back after this timeout and uh, hear from some Bisons. We're going to hear from Cole Chansey and Vionte Williams after this timeout. The Bisons win at 14-13 on Saturday night. More ahead on this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. Back on this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons, and Coach has been talking about Cole Chancey on the show and, and also Vionte Williams with the incredible plays that he had. And after the game, Tim Hamilton was able to catch up with Cole Chancey and Vionte Williams. You uh, career high tonight by, by a yard. I mean, that's, is that something you think about, or is that just something that... that, that... No, sir. Uh, you know... I'd be fine not, you know, getting the ball and just blocking every play, man. Uh, and I know the slots, you know, who, you know, all offense skill guys, you know, we do anything for one another, and uh, we all know that. Uh, just however it happens, you know, we're, we're going to roll with it. When you saw it in the air, what, was your, what were your thoughts? I just knew it was now or never. I just we had to pick up speed, and when I seen it was out of my reach, I had to do something else about it, which I jumped out for it. Did you kind of rub it into our wide receivers like that? That's how you do it. That's how you go get a ball like that. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> but maybe I could be an example. <laughs> Scott Good gets the last word in right there. And I tell you, that was, a, that was a good question. Paul, you said after the game you thought that embodied uh, the spirit, uh, the culture of the program with his effort because the ball was well overthrown. He had to make an incredible uh, effort to go and get that football. That was not an easy play at all. Yeah, I, I mean, I think a lot of guys would have just assumed they can't get to it, you know. And but I'm gonna tell you that I, I have rarely heard Beyonce talk that much. I mean, and, and that, what a beautiful smile. He he's just such a such a quiet, low key young man. But he is a 
he is one of the most elite corners that's, that's ever played Boston football. And so we just so proud of him. And on the post-game interviews um, afterwards, uh, they, during the broadcast, Cole was interviewed, Cole Chancey. And we, we talk about how tough he is, how hard he runs, and just what a, what a good football player he is. But the first thing he did was, uh, was thank God and, and talked about honoring God. And I thought that also uh, just, just really encompassed his program. Yeah, and you know, I think a lot of guys, they, they recognize that when the mic's in front of my face, I'm supposed to be unselfish and talk about, I don't, I don't you know, have to touch the ball or whatever, but I think he means that. I mean, that guy, oh, there's that, sincerity. You yeah, can that see. guy is a winner, and he's all about winning, and he'll do whatever it, you know, if I said, Cole, I need you to play uh, offensive guard this week, he'd say, Coach, just tell me how to, tell me how to get in the stance. I'll go do it, Coach. Just, you know, and he, he's a special, special bison. Another Bison that had a very good game on Saturday night, Taylor Streeter. Haley Kate Webb will catch up with him when we come back after this. In four days. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children. She didn't know what to do. Did you have a good day at school? She gave them some broth. Without any bread. There you go. And kiss them all soundly. Night night. Good night. And put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. It's now always a fun time to hear Kaylee, uh, Haley Kate Webb catch up with uh, one of the Bisons, and Taylor Streeter is her guest this week. Thanks, Billy. I'm here with senior defensive back Taylor Streeter, and we're going to switch things up a little bit today. So I'm going to give you two options, and you're going to tell me which one you think is the better of the two. And if you're passionate about one and feel the need to elaborate, feel free. You ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. MJ or LeBron? Ooh, that's tough. That's a starter. Uh, MJ. Got to go with the MJ. original. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Superman or Batman? Batman. Easy. Okay. Easy. Batman. Marvel or DC? Marvel movies, DC comics. Okay, why? Marvel movies these past 10 years have been amazing, amazing. But I grew up on like reading the DC comics, so I was like, my favorite superman, superhero growing up was Batman. Batman was my guy, so I gotta go with DC comics and Marvel movies. Okay. Kanye or Drake? Drake. No question. Drake, no question. Hands down. Hands down, Drake. Best Drake album? Ooh, that's tough. Mm, nothing was the same. Okay. Nothing was the same. Madden or 2K? Madden. Ooh, that was quick. Yeah, football guy. Okay. Uh, PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. I'm with you on that one. Uh, PlayStation, easy. I grew mm. up on PlayStation, never. Yeah. Never even played Xbox. Okay, loyal, a loyal, a loyal PlayStation loyal. guy. Yep. Mm -hmm. The mountains or the beach? I'm gonna say beach, because I've never really been to the mountains, so. I grew up in Florida, so the beach okay. is right around the corner. Beach, so. beach mm -hmm. is home then? Mm-hmm, yes ma'am. Okay, eating out or? Cooking. 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 Yeah. Do you cook? I like to cook, yeah. Do you have a favorite dish? Uh, I would say my breakfast is pretty good. Breakfast? Yep, eggs, bacon. Yep, that's my thing. Breakfast is the mm -hmm. best. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is not a this or that question, mm -hmm. but it's my favorite one. I can't leave it out. So give me your best Coach Simmons impersonation. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, man. This, uh, this meeting, this practice tonight, very bad important. Bad important. Tonight's meal, bad important. These next 72 hours, bad important. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. For the Harding Sports Network, I'm Haley Kate Webb with Taylor Struder, and we're sending it back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks, Haley. And uh, I, I wish everybody could always see Paul's reaction when he's watching the, the players with the uh, impressions. Uh, do you say that? Last week you said you were misquoted. No, that's the best one. Taylor <laughs> Struder, that was, that was the best one. We, <laughs> yeah, good job, Taylor. Mm -hmm. yeah, good. That was good. And now, uh, coming up this week, gosh, I, I couldn't tell you the last time we've had back-to-back -back home games on, on a schedule, but uh, at home this week, uh, 
uh, uh, stepping out of state finally and playing in Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, you know it's exciting to be home again. I tell you what, if you if you watch the scores in the league last week, you know that it, I mean it feels like mm -hmm. it, it, you know every week you guys show up and play. In Southern Nazarene, they beat they beat Southeast, who's been really good, and um, you know the last time they were here. Mm -hmm. It was a long night for us. And those guys beat us on our home field, and, and uh, I'll never forget that night. And so we got to have a great week. And you know, I, I tell you what, we would love to have another great tailgate party. It's you know, it's going to be hot all week, but if you hadn't looked, it's going to be high by 80 degrees Saturday. It's going to be fantastic. So so I'd love to see you guys come back out and get behind us Saturday. And we're gonna we just got to keep on getting better. We got to keep on getting better and improving if we want to have a chance to have the kind of year these guys want to have. But we. We feel very blessed with what happened Saturday. Uh, came out of it healthy, and uh, just looking forward to getting back to work tomorrow. All right, Paul Simmons, always enjoy looking back at the highlights with you, and uh, have a great week. Thank you, Billy. All right, the Bisons now 3-1 and one on the season, ranked 22nd nationally. Don't forget 6 o'clock on Saturday night at First Security Stadium. Come out early and tailgate. Get ready for the Brotherhood Walk, which is at 345 on Saturday night. We'll see you next time.